God, we gather as your people to raise our song above, and we dare to claim the promise of your love. Though the day may not yet be here, we trust it soon will be when your children May our hearts and minds be opened, filling the church doors open wide. May there be room enough for everyone inside. For in God there is a welcome, in God we all belong. May that welcome be. Oh, we pray for all the young lives Cut short by fear and shame So afraid of who they are and whom they love May the message now be banished That your love is for the few May their faith in you our hearts and minds be opened, filling your church doors open wide. May there be room enough for everyone inside. For in God there is a welcome, in God we all belong. May that welcome God, we're working for the future when children far and wide can live their lives with dignity and pride. As they grow in strength and stature, may they join us hand in hand as against all hate we stand. Oh, may our hearts and minds be opened, filling the church doors open wide. May there be room enough for everyone inside. For in God there is a welcome, in God we all belong. May the From the falter of breath Through the silence of death To the wonder that's breaking beyond God has woven a way Unapparent by day For all those of whom From today till we die Through all questioning why To the place from which time and tide flow Angels tread on our dreams And magnificent themes Of heaven's promise are echoed Trinity Guildwood and our service of worship for the sixth Sunday of Easter. If you are joining us for the YouTube premiere at 10.30 a.m., you're welcome to join in the live chat, which is found on the right-hand side of the screen, as long as your screen is not in full screen mode. My name is Stephen.
We are so glad you can be with us. Let us worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Let us pray. Merciful God, you are prepared for those who love you, riches beyond imagination. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I now invite Denise to read from the book of Acts. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortal life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole world, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps root for him and find him. Though indeed he's not far from each one of us. For in the time we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I speak to you in the name of the most blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A young child, knowing her mother is nearby, is joyful happy and content. Mother 
is at home. Even while accompanying mom to the grocery store, the child, curious, perhaps even playful and adventurous, explores the store. Mother is nearby. Mother is at home. However, should that child lose sight of her mother, merriment soon turns to terror. And not without reason. Intuitively, the child knows it cannot survive on its own. The human condition is one of interdependence. To thrive, indeed survive, we need each other. And not just the basics, but all that makes life rich. Family, friends, the broader aspects of human culture. We're interdependent. We need each other. Human beings were made for fellowship, made in God's image, the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Part of what has made COVID-19 so challenging is that social distancing is difficult when one is made for relationship and interreliance. However, the good news is that, as St. Paul puts it in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 to 39, I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God does not and will not abandon any of us. Not in life. In God's family, there are no orphans. He is with us. Each of us is God's beloved child. And not in death. At the end of this mortal life, Christ's love for us is stronger than the grave. And we return to that place of love from which we came. Indeed, Jesus has prepared a home for us, with him in God, because we are his brothers and sisters. We are beloved family. God is with us, beside us in the incarnation as Jesus, our brother, God's son. God is within us as the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the friend. God is not at a distance, but the one in whom we live and move and have our being. Jesus, before his death, says, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming back as a friend, helper, the Holy Spirit of truth, to be with you forever. I will dwell with you within your heart. I will reveal myself to you. You will know that I am in my Father, you in me, and I in you. What a gift. Best coach, best therapist, best mentor, best teacher, best parent, best friend within you. As the psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. Know that Mother is at home. Mother, God is at home in you. God has planted his seed. The spirit is in us. One of my favorite quotes from the mystic Meister Eckhart. The seed of God is in us. Now the seed of God, or I should say, now the seed of a pear tree grows into a pear tree and a hazel seed grows into a hazel tree. A seed of God grows into God. The Eastern Church calls this divinization. Scripture calls it maturity or perfection. Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyon, around 132-202, said that God became what we are in order to make us what he is himself. 
If the Word became a man, it was so that men may become gods. To put it in more inclusive language, if the Word became a human being, it was so human beings may become gods. Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria, said, God became man so that we might become God. Our mission as church is to help people remember who they are. John 14, verse 20 is a deep teaching of enlightenment, of God realization. Who am I? Scripture says, on that day you will know. And knowledge here doesn't mean just head knowledge, but a deep, intimate knowledge. On that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. No orphans. Everyone found, everyone belonging, everyone wrapped in God's love as a child is wrapped in a parent's arms. That's our mission as church, to help people discover or rediscover this treasure, God within, around, and beside us. All the resources and love we could ever need to share who and what we love with those we love and put this treasure to use to work alongside Jesus and make a better world, a world as God dreams it. Amen. And now I invite Linda to lead us in prayer. The prayers of the people for the sixth Sunday of Easter. The risen Jesus promises to send us the Spirit so that he will live in us and be with us always. Let us now pray, saying, Loving God, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. May, may we, we abide in you. We pray for the church, for the clergy and the people of the Anglican Church of Korea, the clergy and the people of the Diocese of Ontario, the religious communities of the Diocese, the Sisters of St. John the Divine, and the Order of the Holy Cross. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda, our Primate, Anne, our Metropolitan, Andrew, our Diocesan Bishop, and Kevin, our Area Bishop. In our parish family of Holy Trinity, we pray for Barry and Frieda Morgan, Wanda and Elizabeth Murdoch, Patricia Murray and Bruce Fowler. Celebrating birthdays this week, James Stevenson and James Mills. We pray for our priests, Stephen, Harold, and Robbie. May each of us radiate a sense of hope, and may the Spirit inspire us to open-heartedly share the reason for our hope. Loving God, as you abide in us, may, may we, we abide in you. We give thanks for all those working on the front line, especially doctors, nurses, medical researchers, respiratory therapists, PSWs, orderlies, paramedics, that through their work, skill, and insight, many will be restored to health. Loving God, as you abide in us, may, may we abide in you. We pray that all God's people will be safe for all who are affected by the COVID-19, for the sick and those in need, especially Ellen, Glennis, Lynn Marie, Marie, Scott, Mark, Shirley, Nancy, Nancy, Frida, Elk, June, John, Wendy, and for others known to you. By 
your indwelling presence heal our hearts and our homes, that they may be havens of peace. We pray for peace in our communities, for peace in our relationships. May your peace spread throughout the world. Loving God, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. For those who are guiding our nation at this time, and shaping municipal, provincial, and national policies, that they may make wise decisions. For the Queen on this Victoria Day long weekend, loving God, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Loving God, in you we live and move and have our being, for we are all your children, and you are not far from any one of us. May we put our faith into action for all the world to see. In the inclusive, generous way we love one another, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, age, or ethnicity. Loving God, as you abide in us, May, May we, we abide in you. you. Thank you for the gift of your presence and bless those who have gone before us. Loving God, as you abide in us, May, May we abide in you. We praise the divine Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who has come to live in us, so that we might live in God. Loving God, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At the end of this video at 11 a.m., you may wish to join us for a time of fellowship and spiritual discussion in a Zoom conference. The link and password to this Zoom conference was sent to you in your most recent weekly edition of Together at Trinity. If you're not a member of our parish and would like to join into this time of fellowship and spiritual discussion, you're invited to email the church office at office trinity gilwood at rogers.com. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah.